Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Mass. Here we are jumping right in here with Connor on Sneak and Show versus Pyle Souza on Hagak. Pyle often playing control lists, adept at tuning them for the meta, taking advantage of the strongest answers available, and there's been no shortage of them. Instead, now playing a deck that is almost entirely threat based, not a ton of answers. Connor firing off a Brainstorm prior to having a fetch land on board. So he's actually ended up with one of those cards from Brainstorm also preordaining. Uh, so perhaps that means his hand was very close to where it needs to be, or uh, he just thinks he has to play it pretty quickly. He's able to Spell Pierce a careful study, and Hogak feels many turns behind at this point. We're on turn three and now just casting an Altar of Dementia with no bodies to go along with it. And here we have another Brainstorm, this time with the fetch land, ready to shuffle away the worst of the cards and get a fresh card on top of the library. Connor has the necessary... Oh, and City of Traders in hand, Lotus Petal, he's got it all here. Sneak Attack, Emrakul, and Gristlebrain, he literally has it all. That's pretty much as good as that deck can do, 22 in the air with haste off of that Sneak Attack. Probably the stronger of the two enablers, uh, I mean, which is fair given that it costs, you know, five or six mana compared to just a three, four show and tell. Often I'd put in a sneak attack off of a show and tell, uh, simply skipping one mana and ensuring that you're able to have haste, which is really the, the key thing with sneak and show. I mean, if you can actually have your creatures have haste and get the job done right now that is infinitely better than passing the turn and potentially losing out to your opponent's plays anything from Caracas and snaring bridge there's so many things that they can put down that can ruin your plans whereas if the windows open and you can just finish the game on the spot that is preferable. Uh, Hagak leading out with Once Upon a Time. And a Stitcher Supplier is a heck of a way to start this story. No, but actually going for Careful Study. I'm a little surprised there. Drawing two, discarding Hagak and a land. Hmm. Now, ponder. I was thinking perhaps there was a bridge from below in his hand that he wanted to get into the graveyard, ensuring that a Stitcher Supplier would create value when sacrificed to Cabal Therapy. Um, but we'll see how this plays out for him. Hedron Crab. And that draws a force of will, possibly possibly for the best there. So Hedron Crab feels like the type of card that has like that long-term uh, problem to it. And here we see a sneak attack grab by Thoughtseize. Uh, Hedron Crab over the course of the game could, in theory, mill more cards. But the reality is Stitcher Supplier being able to tap to Convoke Hogak, uh, I mean, mostly makes it the stronger of the two. So... Likely good on Pile for getting that Hedron Crab to soak up the Force of Will. Now we've got a Stitcher Supplier getting a bridge from below into the bin. Another Stitcher Supplier, and there's a Hogak. Now the Sorceress Spyglass on Connor's side of the board likely s stopping Altar of Dementia, but it doesn't look like that's going to be impactful this game. Connor has Emrakul in hand. He is facing down 10 points of damage, Stitcher Supplier, and now a Cabal Therapy. That's going to be able to grab whatever he wants here. We've got the Sneak Attack. Cabal Therapy again. And that zombie token, a little late. Uh, reminder, uh, when you do sacrifice a creature to 
Cabal Therapy with Bridge from Below, you're actually going to put your token in prior as that trigger goes on the stack on top of naming the card. These two playing at a very quick pace, aside from the fact that they're playing at double speed here for us uh, through the wonders of technology. But if you are at a larger event, you do want to make sure that you put that token in prior, as otherwise you have missed your opportunity. And coming down to game three, so Sneak and Show, game one had everything it could ask for, and Hagak really stumbled. That game, the discard uh, from Pyle's deck was able to keep Connor off of anything, anything useful there, hitting multiple sneak attacks. And we'll see what happens here. Game three, one of the more popular sneak and show variants here in our local meta is Eureka Tell. Actually dropping the sneak attacks for a couple of Eurekas, focusing much more on omniscience. And uh, one of the main selling points of that deck is the ability to run Veil of Summer, a card that really addresses one of the, the core weaknesses of the deck is it needs like this magical Christmas land orientation of, of cards in its hand in order to actually get the job done. And here a Force of Will on Cabal Therapy. So Therapy doing its job, soaking up a Force, also hitting a Brainstorm. Does Connor just have, like, the absolute nut draw here? Are we going to see a, a show and tell? No, just a ponder. Ponder into Lotus Petal. And now a Stitcher Supplier, which is going to be able to take a crack at Connor's hand. Vengevine in the graveyard. One creature cast. Sacrificing therapy. Oh, and he's got Veil of... All right, that is shocking. He's got Veil of Summer in the deck. Didn't need to use the Lotus Petal for it, which feels a little bad. Uh, and now a Carrion Feeder. Getting us a Vengevine swinging in. Oh, and he's got the show and tell. So that Veil of Summer did its job. Hagak comes in for Pile. A naked Emrakul on the other side, so no haste here. He can block this Hagak, no problem. Very interesting game state here. Getting some bridge from below into the graveyard could be the most important way to rebuild. That Annihilator trigger. Not quite as devastating for Hagak as it is for everything else, but still really bad. Connor sitting there with, looks like... Oh, now Bloodgast. I believe he's at 17 life. We've seen the Ancient Tune tap for the show and tell, and he's cracked a fetch land. Sending. Getting a single zombie token. And now he's able to get back a gak. So six damage came in, and Emrakul can swing, but that's actually not going to be enough. Look at that. So even with Emrakul able to swing and Annihilator six on the other side of the board, the crackback proves to be lethal for Connor. Well, Emrakul just not big enough that game. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Ball Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know 
uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.